Hi everyone, I'm Mary Beth McGinders and I'm here today with the incredible Lola Blanc. Blanc. Is it Blanc or Blank? How do you prefer? Blanc. Lola Blanc. Um, you've seen her all over the internet with her podcast. She's a musician and now she's directed a short film and also co-written it called Pruning. Hello Lola, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. So before, as we jump in, uh, can you just give our viewers a little overview of what Pruning is about? Yes, so pruning is about a sort of far right political commentator who discovers that her rhetoric has inspired a mass shooting um, and she has to contend with her feelings about that by uh, any means necessary. And I can understand why you made it because it is unfortunately an incredibly prescient topic nowadays, which is unfortunate. But so, but why did you now, why did you want to tackle this, especially with a woman political commentator, which I think is so fascinating in terms of have, looking at a woman who perpetuates, perpetuates this kind of rhetoric. So like, where did this idea sort of come from and why did you want to tell this kind of story? Yeah, I mean, I, something that I am in, extremely interested in in pretty much every facet of my like creative life is this idea of cognitive dissonance and how yeah. we kind of reconcile um, conflicting information with the thing that we believe or the thing that we're holding on to. I got really interested in um, this idea of these sort of like shock, these sort of like conspiratorial extreme commentators because there's one, and I won't name her name, but there's one who um, expressed a belief that was not aligned with like the party line of the sort of, um, you know, type of political people that she was aligned with. And I became very interested in this idea that like, what do you do if you actually do believe something different from what your like persona dictates that you should be putting out into the public. Um, and the most extreme version obviously of that is the thing we're all afraid of, which is that um, that will lead to actual violence, that that rhetoric um, that someone is, you know, putting out into the world will lead to violence. And how do you then contend with that? It was just a, something that was a really interesting idea to explore for a character. And I also, you know, it's also a sort of expression of my frustration and heartbreak with the state of extreme rhetoric and gun violence in America today. Absolutely. And I'm curious, did you have to do any big you said that you kind of were interested in this kind of world. Did you do a lot of research for this? Did you kind of delve into that side of the internet? And if you did, like, what was that experience like? <laughs> um, I, not anymore. You don't have to go very far to find it, unfortunately, which is so sad too. It's not very hard to research this topic either. Yeah, I mean, I I tend to find myself sometimes curiously looking at what people who um, I think are saying things that are very extreme are talking about. Yeah. Um, like, I, because I, you know, with the cult connection, my podcast about, is yeah. about extreme belief. Conspiracy theorists are something that are just like actually very interesting to me and very, very scary to me. Um, yeah. By horror felt like the appropriate genre. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I didn't have to actually do that much further research. There were sort of these personas that I was already drawing from and was quite familiar with. Um, but of course, every time, you know, you go look at a Tucker Carlson type of political commentator, like you feel a little queasy. So fortunately, it's a little be shower, not like need a shower kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, and this is your first foray into directing, correct? No, no. This is my third short. Third uh, short. Okay. Yes. And I've also directed a number of music videos. Yeah, that's amazing. And do you want to, do you one day want to break into feature filmmaking? I'm assuming yes. Of course. <laughs> yes, that's the ultimate goal. Um, I have my feature scripts that I am working away on and hoping that post strike, I can, uh, you know, make into a film. Yeah, well, and so you, um, you worked with also with Madeline Brewer here, who is an incredible actor, and she's so good in these incredibly emotional, tense situations. But what was that process? like working with her in this short and kind of taking her into that headspace of this extreme character? Um, it was awesome. Uh, Madeline is like such a force. Like she's so clear on the direction that she thinks makes sense. And she's so smart in the choices that she makes. Like I really didn't have to do very much to be honest. 
like I was like okay like let's read it let's see what you got and she like immediately gave the perfect performance um but I think Amazing. that yeah I think that part of that is she just like you know she really connected with um the idea of this kind of character who she you know doesn't relate to in any way I don't think as um as far yeah. as like what she's putting out into the world but like finds really interesting to inhabit so it immediately just like was basically perfect to be honest <laughs> It's amazing. Well, and this is not no spoilers, but you meld body horror into this really well in a way that was pretty surprising. And I love that. And so why, like, what about body horror kind of called to you in terms of incorporating it into this story that is unfortunately very real and very prescient? Um, to me, it's just such a, like, the true horror of inspiring something as horrific as a mass shooting is it's coming from within it's coming from inside yeah. the house. so like that it's really that feeling that i wanted to kind of um cool. explore you know it's it is yeah. literally the feeling within your body Amazing. <clears throat> well and so this isn't the only thing you have coming up you also have a story in the haunted reels anthology correct that's coming up um which was collected by Dave Loss David Lawson Jr., who we all know. And you also worked with him on this film, right? He co-produced it with the, the Benson and Moorhead fam as well. Yes, yes. Rustic Films, which Dave, is Dave, oh, cool. Justin, and Aaron's company are the production company on this film, which was very exciting for me. It's so um, cool. But I wanted to hear about what your entry, if you could give us a teaser about what you're going to have in Haunted Rails. There's so many cool people in this collection, and I'm so excited that you're in it. And I wanted to hear maybe a little bit more about what you have in the collection. Yeah, well, my story is called Yeast, and oh, wait, I love that name! Like off the bat, <laughs> obsessed that it's called Yeast. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is inspired by uh, uh, some experiences I've had as a lady with some recurring yeast infections, particularly within an unhappy yes. relationship. So, yeah. not to cheer. I'm so sorry, not to cheer about that, but <laughs> no one writes about that stuff, and I just love that you're writing about just another thing a horror being a woman yeast infections and they're disgusting and, and just like the worst experience they're so like sorry everyone listening but they're gross and awful and I'm so excited that you're writing about it because I was like Thank you. it could be either bread or yeast infections and I'm very excited <laughs> It was originally a short, so my hope is I've written now the short story version. I would love to make it into an actual short because it would be so, it's, oh, it's very gross, very gross. Oh my God. Oh, that is so exciting. <laughs> um, that's so cool. So what, like, what kind of genres, are you a horror, per like, you're, are you a horror fan outside of your creative work? Are you a big horror lover? What are some of, like, the movies that have scared you the most that you've seen in the recent past couple of years? Yeah. Oh, past couple of years. Oh, I mean, definitely. Um, 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 Speak No Evil to me is one of the scariest movies I've seen in a couple of years. Like I'm a sucker for like a slow ratcheting tension where you don't know if they're really going to cross that social boundary or not. And then they do a little and then they do a little more. It's literally like that's my fucking favorite genre. And that movie nailed it so well. Um, so definitely that one. Um, oh, yeah. I would have to probably think for longer about, about other ones. Too. Absolutely. So what, do you remember the first horror movie you ever saw though and how old you were? Oh, I mean, so when I was a kid, my brothers, I have three brothers, they were horror freaks and it scared the shit out of me. Um, so it was, there, it, there was everything. I mean, the, the, I remember the VH cost the VHS copy of it was in our house and oh, God. That Satan was inhabiting the, <laughs> the tape because <laughs> we were Mormon um and uh, you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> gremlins critters um you know just like all the franchises basically but we these were all sneaky because we weren't allowed to watch them so that was my first exposure to horror from like a very young age oh oh that's wild oh that's true because you hadn't oof were you the youngest too were you the youngest second youngest oh god oh so you were tormented by the oldest ones oh. I apologize I was the oldest sibling so I did similar things to myself oh siblings. yeah oh no my brothers would like tell me that the Langoliers were coming and like lock me in the bathroom with the lights off there was a lot of horror like really mean horror pranks in our household but wow. I learned to love it because I had to to survive that's true <laughs> <laughs> and now you're making horror movies so yeah. Are there any subgenres that you really want to like dive into when you start making feature films or just manifesting that you're going to start making feature films? But like, what are some of your favorite subgenres that you really want to dig into? Well, I mean, the ones that I have 
currently in my head. I mean, first of all, psychological horror is just always yeah. where my heart goes. Like that is, I, I love slashers. I don't connect with that as a director. Like I really want to explore like the things that happen in our brains because our brains are so freaking scary. Um, I also love um, a good like magical realism, like that part of horror. Um, and then, yeah, that one day I'll make a movie like Speak No Evil or Funny Games where it's really about like the social interaction. Like I just love it. <laughs> I love it. And it can be so, it's just like playing with social contracts and how we think we're supposed to interact with people and then the taboos of breaking them. It's just so oh. good. No. <laughs> Well, Lula, thank you so much for chatting with me about pruning. Do you, could you tell us any information about when people will be able to watch it or is that all under wraps right now? Well, if you are attending the Palm Springs Short Fest, you can watch it on June 24th, but otherwise it will probably go online sometime in the winter. All right, everyone, we'll keep your eye out for pruning. And Lola, again, thank you so much for chatting with me. And I cannot wait to read your story and the book and whatever amazing work you have coming up next. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.